In today's video, GTA condo sales are down 35% in the second quarter of 2022, year over year. That and much more in today's video. Hello everyone, this is Sam from Sibiri 6 Real Estate and Remax Wiltron Realty Inc. As always, back with another video for you guys here today. If you're new, welcome to the channel. On this channel, I like to discuss all things Toronto, GTA, real estate oriented, whether it's market stats or trends, buyer advice, seller advice, building reviews, and so much more. So if you find this type of content informative or useful in any way, feel free to subscribe and leave a like. However, if you wish to also get in touch with me as well, you can find my contact information on the screen and in the description box as well. Feel free to do a little bit of your own due diligence and homework before you do get in touch with me. Uh, just simply type my name into Google. You can find my Google reviews of those who have worked with me and those who continue to work with me. Anyways, enough of all that annoying yet important self-promotion. Let's get to the point of today's video, which is discussing the 35% drop in condo sales year over year. That's right, in the second quarter of 2020, there was about 5,600 condo sales. To be precise, 5,687. That represented a 35% decrease year over year because in the second quarter of 2021, that figure was up to the tune of 8,700. So sales fell from 8,700 to 5,600. And this is a alarming stat. No, it is not an indication of a crash, but a further indication of what I've discussed on this channel, a major and noticeable correction. And to some that might be semantics, but to me that is a important distinction. And what makes this drop in sales a little bit more alarming is that it happened while listings remained relatively the same. Because we could easily envision a scenario scenario where sales drop because inventory drops. As a result, a drop in sales figure in of itself does not indicate anything to us. We have to take the drop in sales figure in conjunction with listing figures. And here we see listings pretty much remained exactly the same year over year. In 2021, where there was 8,700 sales, there was 14,440 listings, meaning condos that came onto the market for sale within the Toronto and GTA condo market, where there was only 5,600 sales, that 35% drop. Well, guess what? There was 14,316 new listings for condos. So the listings ostensibly remained the same. Yes, a 0.9 decrease, but in the grand scheme of things, a 0.9 decrease is nothing. But let's be very factual and accurate here. Although listing figures are even while sales are dropping uh, 35%, which is alarming, as I said, uh, that's not all there is to the news because in terms of average prices, prices are actually still higher year over year in terms of second quarter of 2021 versus the second quarter of 2022. Because in 2021, uh, the average sold price for all condo types in the second quarter was $686,000. Whereas in this second quarter, we're looking at $769,000. So this is what I mean when I say it's not a crash, it's just a correction. Now I'm not referring to what's going to happen, I'm simply making a comment about at the time of recording of this video, what has happened thus far. And many will ask, well, why is this the case? Well, this really shows us that condos, as I have discussed on this channel, are in no way immune to the larger market. And this is happening across the larger market. So not accounting for July, but up to June 2022, a plateau or increase in listings is on market being longer, a drop in sales figures, while listings remain either the same or plateau. Now the key exception there is, as I said, up to June, because in July of 2022, things seem to be actually headed towards a different direction, wherein sales are still down, but listings are also dropping. And a drop in inventory is a sign of that. Toronto condo sellers and really home sellers overall face a major decision. The market is not a seller-friendly market. It's a buyer advantageous market. 
interest rates are going up there's less competition amongst buyers more competition amongst sellers and yes that i mentioned prices are falling so should i go on market now given my higher monthly if i'm on variable or should i wait for a year to a year and a half to kind of weather the storm and the latter option will include many of the investor owners shifting towards the rental market and herein lies the consequence of the dwindling supply but let's be very factual and accurate here although listing figures are even while sales are dropping uh, 35 percent which is alarming as i said uh, that's not all there is to the news because in terms of average prices prices are actually still higher year over year in terms of second quarter of 2021 versus the second quarter of 2022 and i'm not going purely upon the numbers here i'm also speaking from experience because those who are watching this who are my seller clients can attest to this i'm telling most of my sellers not just for condos across all property types to wait if they can afford to wait furthermore a further consequence of those investor sellers who are facing that decision sell or wait a year and a half to two years for the market to recover well those who opt once once again here particularly the investors those who opt for the rental portion of the market meaning well okay i'm gonna wait for a year and a half and then you know in that meantime i'm gonna put my property my condo unit on the market for rent a larger byproduct of that is going to be a potential oversupply of the current hot steaming rental markets because if you did not know right now the rental market is on an absolute tear and as more 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 sellers face this major decision and those who choose to convert into the rental market will lead to a potential oversupply as a result i do not see it as wise if you are a tenant out there to rent right now because right now rental prices are either at peak market conditions or nearing peak market conditions and i do not foresee rents and the rental market being this high and competitive in six months to a year there will be more failed sellers terminated sellers who are investors converting into the rental market we saw this exactly happen at the beginning of the worldwide event that's for you philip where if you know what i'm referring to by the worldwide event there was an oversupply of the rental market and that oversupply led to a deflated rental market now i do not believe it's going to get to that same extent i just think you stand a better chance of dealing with lower rental prices if you are a tenant at minimum six months from now on the flip side of things of course if you're a landlord right now is the best time to go on market uh, if you have a vacant unit Anyways, let me know if you have any further questions. As always, feel free to get in touch with me. My contact information in the description box and on the screen as well. Uh, feel free to get in touch with any of your questions. Also, feel free to subscribe. Your support in that regard is greatly appreciated. Thank you very much so for watching. Stay tuned and stay safe. Thank you.